If you've been around Drupal for a little while, you've probably heard the phrase, there's a module for that. And with over 9,000 modules currently on Drupal.org, there's a good chance it's true. There's probably a module that does at least some of what you need already. But what if there isn't? Or what if that module doesn't quite do what you need it to do, and you need it to do something slightly different, or in a slightly different way? In this video series, we'll be taking an in-depth look at creating modules for Drupal 7 and covering many of the major components and concepts, APIs, and resources that will help you become a module developing rock star. Throughout the course of this video, we'll build a handful of simple modules that demonstrate the use of Drupal's APIs. We'll take a look at Drupal's documentation and where to find information about what's going on under the hood in Drupal and the APIs that are available to you, both on Drupal.org and on API.Drupal.org. In addition to that, we'll take a look at a module called Devel, which will help us inspect the code inside of our own modules and get a better idea of the variables, functions, and the way that things are working under the hood in Drupal. And then we'll take a look at integrating with Drupal's hooks system, the mechanism that allows us as module developers to respond to different events and questions that Drupal asks basically allowing us to alter the way the Drupal behaves or add additional functionality to Drupal core, core or some of the third-party modules without having to hack core or any of the code from someone else's module. In addition to looking at Drupal's hook system, we'll also take a look at the APIs provided by Drupal. One of those is a bunch of functions that will help us write more secure code. In addition to looking at those functions, we'll also talk about what it takes to write secure code how to make sure that you're preventing people from exploiting your site using cross-site scripting attacks or cross-site re request forgeries, or if you're querying the database, how to make sure that you're preventing SQL injection. We'll cover writing secure code pretty early on in the series, getting it out of the way so that we can make sure that as we write code for the rest of the videos in the series, we're doing so in a secure format. After getting some basic explanations out of the way, like what is a hook and how do we write secure code, we'll take a look at the anatomy of a module. Where does our code go within the Drupal system? How do we name our files so that Drupal knows how to find them? What the heck is a .info file? What are these .module files? And get an idea for all the different components that make up any module in Drupal. Once we've got those basics out of the way, we'll take a look at implementing hook menu so that our modules can create new pages on our Drupal site that live at a specific URL. We'll start with the very basics and then work on some of the more complicated aspects of hook menu like controlling permissions, wildcards in your URL, and a concept that Drupal calls autoloader functions. While we're going through the menu system, we'll also learn about ways that your module can build and create content and then return it to Drupal in an appropriate format a system that Drupal refers to as renderable arrays, or the render API. Once we've got content that we're returning to a page or any portion of our Drupal site, we'll also need to make sure that we're returning it in a themable way. So we'll take a look at how we as module developers can use tools like Drupal's hook theme and built-in theming functions in order to make sure that any HTML that we create inside of our module can be overridden at the theme layer. You never know what those designers might want to do with our HTML, but we want to make sure that they don't have to hack our module in order to make those changes. Then, with renderable arrays and theming out of the way, we'll take a look at Drupal's Form API, which is sort of an extension of the Render API system that allows us to build forms with built-in security and a built-in workflow for validating and submitting the data from those forms. In addition to looking at the built-in workflow for forms and how to build a simple form, we'll look at a few more of the complex things that you can do with forms, um, like the new pound states system in Drupal 7, which allows us to create forms that are not only functional, but pretty as well. We'll also take a look at using Drupal's new database abstraction layer, or DBTNG. In order to query the database, to pull in information, update information in the database, delete information in the database, how our module can create its own schema in the corresponding tables. We'll even get into how, after a module's already been deployed on a site and the table has been created, we can update the schema for our module as we go. And then finally, we'll end the series with a discussion of some best practice tips and tricks for keeping your code organized, maintainable, and when possible, contributing it back to Drupal.org. 
So now that you know what we're going to cover in this series, let's fire up our text editor or IDE and get started creating some code. Thank <laughs> you.